Hello, hello, and welcome back to the Studio Eye podcast. Today, I want to talk about happiness. I feel like lately we approach life in such a negative way, and it can be very hard to stay happy in these times. And this episode is in no way meant to dismiss the problems of the world whatsoever at all. But I did want to talk about how you can implement more happiness in your daily life, regardless of what is happening around you. Being happy is a choice in a way. And before everybody gets on their high horse, no, depression cannot be cured by just deciding to be happy. Your problems won't go away just because you decide that you should be happy. But I do believe that we can intentionally add things into our lives that will help with your feeling of overall content. And that is what I mean with happiness being a choice. It is partly. There are some things that you can do and habits that you can implement that will help you have a more positive outlook on life or that will just help make life a little bit more fun. And that is what is also going to make you happier in the long run, basically. So that's this episode. So the first point that I wanted to touch is gratitude and positivity. So gratitude is it doesn't mean that you have to be grateful for every single thing that that is just toxic you should not be grateful for losing your job for example even if that means that you get to reinvent yourself it still absolutely sucks but sometimes we get caught up in all of the things that we don't have and we forget everything that we already have and that puts us in a more negative mindset being grateful is is not always easy I, I i know that too and there are some easy things that you might do that will help you be more more grateful overall and that's gratitude lists and focusing on those things that you already have and really diving into why you're happy that you have the things that you have because i noticed my I, for example I, I caught myself last week i was hating on the apartment that i have i was like it sucks here it's a horrible place nothing works and then my boyfriend looked at me and he said you have a roof over your head you have an apartment that is pretty nice and it's actually not that bad and you put a lot of time time into making it pretty and he was right I was being a total brand. I wanted a bigger apartment, a better life, and all this, th all those things. And I completely forgot to be grateful for what I have. Imagine if I wouldn't have an apartment. Imagine if you wouldn't have a job or all the things that you are complaining about. It is fine to be discontent with those things, obviously, but it isn't okay to dismiss the fact that you have them. And being grateful for what you have won't stand in the way of wanting to improve it. So if you are incredibly grateful to have a roof over your head, then it becomes easier to see that not getting that new place does not need to have that humongous impact on your well-being, for example. It, it just becomes something that you want, not something that is your all or nothing happiness. This cat is f f set on sabotaging my podcast today. I mean, now he's playing with a ball with a bell. But, so try to remind yourself of the things that you are grateful of. Try to remember all those things you have. And sometimes things just plain suck and that is okay, but there will always be something that you can be grateful about. And I'm not saying dismiss everything that sucks, but remember the good things too. And that brings me to my second point, and that's having a positive outlook on things. And that is something that you will have to train yourself to do. So approach situations as if they will turn out good, because we often always assume that everything will fail. My dad is the champion of this. Like nothing will work out, it, this is hard, I won't be able to do this, like all those negative feelings. But what if instead you focus on it will turn out good? I'm going to make sure that it does. That's even a step further. Like make sure that you have a safety net in place that you can rely on. And that will make sure that you will be able to take a bit more risks and that you will feel a little bit more safe but make that safety net a safety net that's always there. 
So for example, have an emergency fund on your bank account or make sure that you have, if you are, that you have a place to live even when you decide to become a digital nomad, for example, things like that. But make it something that is always there so it's not like, oh yeah, but I have this when you're trying a new thing. Like if you always have a security net, a, a, like a security fund in your bank account, it becomes less of a significant thing when you try new things because it's already there and you're, you're used to it. It's not like I have this safety because this will turn out bad. So just focus on trying to make things turn out for the better and focus on the good things. Don't focus on what can go wrong, focus on what can go right. And for those things that can go wrong, think of ways that you can make them turn out right. So you're always stepping into a situation and approaching people with the idea that they're out for good, that they have good intentions and start tasks with the idea that they're going to be a success. Because if we step into things with a negative mindset, we're going to look for the bad things. But if you step into situations with a positive outlook, you're going to focus on those positive things more, which overall will make you a little happier. And that's basically what I wanted to say, with look for the good. That was the next point that I wrote down, I kind of already touched on it, but look for the things that are good instead of always looking for the bad. Look for the, for the things that are good instead of always looking for the bad. Read the good news articles and realize that no news can also actually mean good news. We as humans, we are problem solvers. We want to look for the problems that we can solve because that is what we are designed to do. So you'll need to make a conscious effort to look for the good things in life, to not always focus on the problems, but to also see where the good things are. Like if you are, if you are throughout your day, always looking at the things that don't work and all the issues that needs to be, that need to be solved, you will forget that there's so much good around you and that there is so much things that actually are pretty nice. You can, for example, a friend of mine fell into this trap with her boyfriend. She, she read an article that people don't see the bad things about their partners in the beginning. And then she started noticing those things. And it was the only thing that she focused on completely. She forgot that he was nice, that he was kind, that he made her really nice cups of coffee in the morning. She forgot all of that. The only thing that she could focus on was that he left his socks lying around, that he had a weird laugh, things. And eventually she started resenting him and they went to relationship therapy. And after that, she realized that by focusing on those negative things alone, she was falling out of love and the only thing that she needed to do to fall back in love with him was focus on those good things again that is what she learned from that she learned that focusing on the good things and it, it works for for everything like focusing on the good things will make you happier because where your focus is is where what is that saying? Where focus goes, energy. Yeah, where focus goes, energy flows. So try to focus on the good things and see how you will see more good things and how you will feel better. But then, your mindset isn't always the easiest. But what is kind of easy is adding fun into your life. Adding fun into your life is an easy way to to be happier because you are trying to consciously have more fun. And I mean, what is not to be happy about about fun one way that you can add fun is by adding fun to your everyday activities i don't know if any of you watch friends but if you do there is this scene of storyline of rachel and phoebe that go running and phoebe runs like an absolute idiot and rachel doesn't want to go running with her anymore because she feels embarrassed but in the end, she realized that Phoebe is running that way because she runs like she was when she was a kid. And she is having so much fun running that way. And Rachel joins her and they have so much fun running together. It's, it's amazing to see. And it's those things that I mean. You, are, you have activities that you already do every day. Is there a way that you can add fun to them? So for example, can you run in a silly way, but that can also mean put on your favorite podcast or a super fun playlist while you're cleaning, 
or you can tie things together so for example if you need to do some chores that you put on your favorite show in the background or when you need to study that you do it together with friends like there's a million ways to make things more fun so look for the ways that the activities that you have to do anyway that you can make them more fun in different ways or look for alternative activities we often pick the default approach but what if we didn't pick the default approach what if we actually picked the option that we ourselves like the best because one of the best examples that i can give of this is um working out we when somebody wants to start working out in the beginning of the year they often pick that they're going to go running or they're going to go to the gym or they're going to go do some sort of workout class and even in the workout class spectrum, there are so many options. You can go with yoga, you can go with a million different types of Pilates, HIIT workouts, spinning, bar. There's so many options. And even, or, or, or even scrap the workout class altogether, there are so many sports that you can do. What if you were actually going to look for the sport that you enjoyed the most? which makes your working out way much more fun than if you would just have to, to, to go and do a session in the gym that you don't actually enjoy that much. A nice upside to picking things that you enjoy is that you actually will probably stick with them longer. So you will also see the benefits way faster because if you enjoy the workouts that you do, even if they're maybe a little bit less high impact, you will probably stick with it longer which will then lead you to get results, which somebody else who gave up might not have. Or if you are financially capable, you could also outsource things that you don't enjoy and replace them with things that do bring you joy. For example, we are looking into getting a cleaning lady with all the respect in the world, by the way, for the people that can't afford that, but I am in a position that I can, and it's something that I really wanna do. And then those times that I would be cleaning, I probably want to replace by a new hobby like um, like a pottery classes or sewing classes or something like that. I think I would really enjoy that and by outsourcing something that I had to do in the first place, I by outsourcing something that I had to do, I now create more time for myself which will then allow me to do something that I enjoy more. And that also brings me to adding more fun activities into your day. So even you are uh, you can't outsource things. You might have some some free time and you can fill it with the things that you actually enjoy a lot. So you can put in daily, weekly or monthly activities that will actually put more fun into your life. So maybe you can plan a date every week with your boyfriend or you can go on a family outing every month with your whole entire family, which is something that will bring all of you joy. So just try to think of those things that might add additional happiness into your life and they can be small or big or it can be as simple as adding dessert on your menu every single night it doesn't have to be big and the fact that it doesn't have to be big actually leads in very seamlessly to my last point being look for the small joys we often focus on the big things and we tend to focus on those great big trips or that promotion or things like that. And they can be great. Great things and big, large things that make you happy can be amazing to look forward to and to have that excitement of going on vacation soon or buying that house when you have been saving up for a while. But we can't let our happiness depend on those big things. Because those big things, if we let our happiness depend on those big things when they're not there, we will feel hollow and dissatisfied. But when we actually let our overall happiness depend on the small daily things, then that is when we become happier in life because that is when we start focusing on the good, when we are adding little fun into our lives. Those things can always be there. There's always ways to add those things even when your schedule is packed. So do more of those small things add those small things into your life and see how that will impact your overall happiness and then a last thing that will 
probably help a lot with your overall happiness is getting secondhand joy. I'm a secondhand shopper, but I also really appreciate secondhand joy. If it, it is scientifically proven over and over and over again that we as humans, we work in group. We are connected with each other and something that will absolutely help your happiness is making other people happy. So that can be doing activities with or for the people that we love. And that sometimes doesn't mean that we have to love it as well. So for example, for me, that is gaming with my boyfriend. He's gonna build me a gaming PC. I don't particularly enjoy gaming, but seeing him extremely happy when I game with him and his friends makes up for the fact that I don't enjoy gaming. Or when I go to a workout class with my friend that loves work working out, I don't necessarily enjoy it, but she gets so happy. Sorry for the sirens, guys, that's on living in a city. Or the birthday party of my little brother. It's not a fun activity for me, but he gets so happy that I'm there that I get happy. Just try to mix it up once in a while and just do selfless activities that will make other people happy. And you'll see that it will add to your overall happiness as well. So I hoped that this helped and that it gave you some inspiration to make those dark days that we are having recently a little lighter, especially in winter. Winter is always a hard season to be happy. So I hope that I could have added some little happiness into your life. And if this podcast does bring you a little happiness, then I would love for you to, sub to subscribe to it. Or if you're watching this on YouTube, give it a like, a comment, subscribe to the channel, and otherwise I will see you next week. Toodaloo!